understand. When you go to the doctor to get your blood pressure measured, you will hear two numbers. For example, 120 over 80. So what do those numbers mean? In order to understand the subject of blood pressure, we first have to know some information about the circulatory system. The heart is a muscle the size of your fist. It constantly pumps blood through the blood vessels, and the blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the body's organs and drops off waste products to be filtered out by the kidneys, liver, lungs, and skin. Each heartbeat pushes blood out of the heart into the arteries. Then the heart relaxes while getting ready for the next pumping beat. So in fact, we observe two actions here, the contraction and the relaxation. The contraction is called systole and the relaxation diastole. The blood pressure is the amount of pressure exerted on your artery walls by the blood flowing into them under the effect of the heart's pumping action. Now let's see. If the heart contracts to push the blood forward, this must be causing a higher pressure on the artery walls than when it relaxes. Right? Exactly. So there are actually two readings for the blood pressure in one person. One while the heart contracts, which causes the higher pressure value, called the systolic pressure. And the other when the heart relaxes or rests. It's called the diastolic pressure. The systolic pressure is the upper or higher one, and the diastolic is the lower one. Now let's have a further look at the measurement unit of blood pressure. We say, for example, that my blood pressure is 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury, which means that the blood presses on the walls of the arteries with the same pressure of a one millimeter thick column of mercury with the height of, say, 120 millimeters, which is the value we read. A sphygmomanometer and a stethoscope are devices used to record your blood pressure. A sphygmomanometer consists of an inflatable cuff, a measuring unit, the mercury manometer or aneroid gauge, and a mechanism for inflation which may be manually operated, like a manually operated bulb and valve, or a pump operated electrically. The cuff is normally placed to fit around an upper arm at roughly the same vertical height as the heart, while the subject is seated with the arm supported. It is essential that the correct size of cuff is selected for the patient. For clinical measurements, it is usual to measure and record both arms in the initial consultation to determine if the pressure is significantly higher in one arm than the other. The cuff is inflated until the artery is completely occluded or blocked. Using a stethoscope, we listen to the brachial artery at the elbow. The examiner slowly releases the pressure in the cuff. As the pressure in the cuff falls, a whooshing or pounding sound is heard. It's called cord cough sounds, when the blood flow starts again in the artery. The pressure at which this sound begins is noted and recorded as the systolic blood pressure. The cough pressure is further released until the sound can no longer be heard. This is recorded as the diastolic blood pressure. We can also palpate or feel the radial pulse to make sure that the lower reading is correct. The top number, or the systolic blood pressure, is considered a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease for people above 50 years of age. In most people, systolic blood pressure rises steadily with age due to increasing stiffness of large arteries, a long-term buildup of plaque due to unhealthy eating habits, and a sedentary lifestyle. A single high reading does not necessarily mean that you have high blood pressure. However, if readings stay at 140 over 90 or above that, so the systolic is 140 or above, or the diastolic is 90 or above, 
and that's over time, this is a sign that you should start treatment. A treatment program will almost always include lifestyle changes and often prescription medications for those with readings of 140 over 90 or higher. If while monitoring your blood pressure you get a systolic reading of 180 or higher or a diastolic reading of 110 or higher, wait a couple of minutes and take it again. If the reading is still at that value or above that level, you should seek immediate medical help. You might be having a hypertensive crisis and it's life-threatening, so please go to the doctor immediately. Starting at age 20, it is recommended to do a blood pressure screening every two years. Even if your blood pressure is normal, you should consider making lifestyle modifications to prevent the development of high blood pressure and to improve your heart health. For more on blood pressure, please tune into I Understand TV. All the best. This video contains general information about medical conditions. The content might not be suitable for everyone and should not be treated as such. Always consult your doctor before using medications. The medical information is provided without any warranties or legal obligations to those who might apply them.